Welcome to a very requested video about making mobile input into Unity. So this is the cart micro game that I just downloaded from Unity and this is how it works. It basically got three inputs. So we got forward, we got sideways and we also got reverse. Okay, so that is all we have to do in order to make this for mobile devices. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing that we're going to need is some buttons. So we need a button to accelerate and a button to reverse. So let's do that. We In here we have a game manager and inside the game manager what we're going to do is create a new button in here. Now instead of creating a conventional button with this button script, what we're going to do is just delete this and we're also going to delete the button. Instead of the button we are going to use a event trigger now this is the event trigger that uh, controls this button obviously and what we're going to need from here is a way of knowing if the pointer is down and the pointer is up so here is all the methods that we can use and the one that we need is this pointer down and we also need a pointer up so for now we're gonna leave these blank we're gonna reshape this button just a little bit and we're gonna place it somewhere in the side like this for example we're going to make a copy of this and we are going to place it in the opposite side and these are going to be the acceleration and reverse. They also have to be very transparent like this so we can barely barely see them and into the final game we should make them completely transparent. Okay now let's get into scripting. So in order to receive input from the UI what we're going to need is a couple of things. So first of all we are going to need a method that will go over to into game manager and lucky for us we already have a game flow manager so we're just going to open that and we're going to create some classes in here so we need four classes and the first class is going to be public void accelerate and all this accelerate is going to do is it's going to set a float so let's create a float in here let's create a public Let's hide it from the inspector and let's call it acceleration. So when we accelerate, we want that to be equal to one. So acceleration is equal to one. Let's copy and paste that and let's create a deacceleration. And that is going to be obviously zero. Then we want two more. And these two more are going to be res responsible for breaking. So instead of accelerate, we are going to do break. And the break will set this to minus one and back to zero. And instead of using accelerate, we want another float breaking. There it is. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're using these methods to set the breaking to minus one, then back to zero. Okay, now we're done with the flow manager and let's go back into the keyboard. So in here, we want a reference to this game flow manager. So we're going to say game flow manager is we're gonna make it private for now and there it is now we need a start method to actually initialize this so let's say void start and we want to say flow manager is equal to find object of type game flow manager and there it is we're almost done with our system so now all we have to do is change these references so instead of using this accelerate function we're just going to delete this and we are going to set it to be equal to flow manager dot acceleration is equal to one then it's true if it's equal to zero then it's false okay so what we're doing in here we're using a very simple if statement so we're saying if acceleration is equal to one this is true if the acceleration is anything other than one it's set to false we're going to have to do the exact same thing for breaking so we're going to say flow manager dot breaking is equal to one question mark true and false and one mistake that i made in here is that this needs to be minus one and for the turning we're gonna leave this as is for now and later on i'll show you how to use the accelerometer so now let's test if this actually worked and in order to test it we're gonna go back into these buttons so this is the right button and this is going to be used for accelerating so drag and drop the game manager into this slot in here and go and search for acceleration there it is and we want to do the exact same thing for deacceleration so we go ahead and look for that as well and there it is okay now let's see if it actually worked and i seem to get an error 
Okay, so the one mistake that I made in here is that I'm using start with the small s and it needs to be with the capital S. So just change that and go back into your game. And now if I hit play, we should see that we are playing the game. So now if I try to accelerate, we're gonna see we're going forward and if I let go, the car stops. Okay, so now let's connect the reverse. We're gonna have to do the exact same thing. Game flow manager. We're gonna use brake. And we're gonna do the same thing for debraking. That's how I, I named it. So now if I play, we should see everything is working fine. So now I can go forward and I can go in reverse. And if I let go, the car stays stationary. Okay, so the last thing that I want to show you is how you can use the accelerometer. So in order to use the accelerometer, you can just say in here input.acceleration.x. So this is when you tilt your phone when it's on landscape mode. And it's not preferred to leave it like this. So up here, always add in a public float sensitivity and always multiply this with sensitivity. So that is how you can use the accelerometer. I obviously can't test this right now because I am on a PC, but that is how you can use it. So this is the code. You can just copy and paste it. Thank you for watching and um, I'll see you in the next video.